Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. Last night the sky was clear, not so the case right now, the clouds have returned. But I was looking in the western sky and first of all I noticed the evening star or Venus. Venus is extremely bright right now and actually is getting even brighter. When you look at Venus through the telescope, it shows a view almost like you're looking at the moon, except it's all cloudy and smooth, uh, Venus that is, and it is showing the shapes of a gibbous phase right now on the way to becoming a crescent Venus. But as it does, it'll be getting brighter. Now last month the sky was clear and up in the north northeastern sky around midnight back then are two galaxies side by side. They are M81 and M82. M81 is known as Bode's galaxy and M82 is known as the Cigar Galaxy. Well the Cigar Galaxy is a very strange galaxy at that. So with a clear sky last night I wanted to get a good view with the big Celestron, 10, uh, uh, Celestron 11 telescope at F10 to see if I can capture the enigmatic center of the cigar galaxy. However, I had one major problem. The moon was full, or just about full, and the sky was extremely bright last night. How do I get around that? Let me show you. This just might be the answer a filter to filter out the moonlight and other distracting lights. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. By the way, if you like my channel, please subscribe because I'm trying to reach that major plateau of 1,000 subscribers. I'm halfway there, building myself up and up. It's kind of like pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. But please, subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you don't like it, go ahead and do something else. Last year, I was able to capture the Cigar Galaxy with this telescope, but at F7. I wanted to try it at F10, but there's a problem with F10, is that with the uh, deep space objects, uh, it's very hard or difficult to stack the, uh, the pictures. So I've been looking up information about how to uh, use the features of the camera itself by a feature called binning. Binning reduces the pixel size, but it increases the light values. And that causes the stacking programs to actually work. So I've been experimenting with a two by two binning to see if it indeed does work. And guess what? It does. Let me show you about the telescope itself. This is the Celestron 11 inch at F10. Uh, which gives a focal length of 2,800 millimeters. That's a long focal length. Now the camera I've been using is the Hypercam 294C ProTech. Tech meaning thermoelectrically cooled. And last night I had it cooled down to minus 15 degrees uh, Celsius. Now the Galaxy M82, the Cigar Galaxy, is located way up high in the northeastern sky at about 11 o'clock at night and by about one o'clock in the morning it is high overhead and what's called the meridian and it crosses over the meridian. Now when you're using an equatorial telescope you have to do what's called a meridial flip and that's the uh, have the telescope flip from one side to the other. Let me show you. Now during the course of the night as you're tracking the telescope is following the rotation of the earth tracking the object. In this case it was the cigar galaxy last night but eventually the object's going to be coming straight high overhead and crossing what we call the meridian. And when that happens, the telescope can't go much further than this. So you have to do what's called a meridial flip. And that tells the telescope to flip to the other side of the horizon and start tracking. It basically does a 180 degree flip. Then, as it continues to track the rotation of the Earth, you see the telescope now goes more toward the western sky, west is that way, as it continues tracking and tracking and tracking. So last night, around one o'clock, about quarter after one, is when the telescope did its meridial flip. With my camera, I have the 294. There's a little filter drawer that is an accessory to the camera, and there holds this filter. This is the Altair quad band filter and this is what I use to help filter out that bright lunar light from last night and also other distracting city light pollutions. Now while I was inside I was using uh, the Celestron PWI uh, control uh, for the telescope 
and I was also using the uh, PHD2 in the latest version, 2.6.7, and the tracking was awesome last night. Uh, so I was having some very good tracking. I was using SharpCap Pro to capture my imaging last night. Uh, SharpCap Pro is very good, and I also set the binning to 2x2 two two, uh, to give me a, a lower resolution but higher uh, light count, I suppose, per pixel, and it also helps smooth out the, uh, the darkness uh, and the noise in the background. Background noise is smoothed out by binning 2x2. Two two. There's a trade-off. You have a lower resolution, but you seem to have better image quality and easier stacking. The stacking programs appear to like it better than the one by one binning, particularly with this type of telescope and the camera that I'm using. Now, as you can see, here's what a raw picture looked like coming in. Uh, you can barely see the stars and you can't even see the, the galaxy itself, but when you stretch it, and you can do that live in the SharpCap Pro and a lot of the other tracking programs as well, uh, and capturing programs as well, but uh, look at the stretch value. Boy, you can see a remarkable uh, image coming in and look how clean it is. I was so excited about how well the image was looking, I decided to stack the first 36 minutes worth of data and, and I was amazed at how well it stacked with no calibration frames on top of that. Now, obviously I did need to do some of the, uh, particularly the flats and the flats are very, very important. It takes out a lot of that background uh, dust noise uh, and, and imperfections that you see uh, in some of the pictures. Flats are very important and you can see how I do my flats. I just use a white t-shirt over the uh, telescope itself and I do that in the twilight time in the morning uh, when the sky is bright and I just point the sky up in that area, the telescope up to the sky in that area with the white t-shirt on it. Very easy to take flats that way. And it's amazing what's up in the sky that you can't see that's actually there. And with the help of the telescopes, we can see even more of what's beyond up in the sky near you. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to place them in your comments and I'll try to get back with you. So until then, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. What do you think of my hat? <laughs>